Hi everyone, I hope that you're doing well today. It's Margaret here with 60 and Me. I want to talk today about Avon, a company that has been empowering women through beauty for over a hundred years. Fascinating story. I've been doing a series of, um, of uh, videos about iconic beauty companies that were uh, very popular in the times that we were growing up in the 60s and 70s and, and, and even present till today. But Avon is one of these companies that did so much to change uh, women's lives in the, in the, you know, the mid 50s and 60s and I want to talk about how for them it was you know empowering them through beauty and it's a fascinating company and has had all kinds of iterations and it is still in existence today as an online business and also through various social channels which I'll talk about but um, let's talk about Avon and where it got started iconic products its values and kind of why for me it was so important um, for women um, as it was emerging and shifting itself now it was founded in 19 sorry 1886 1886 by a man called David McConnell. And um, I know, 1886, that's like over 100 and like, I don't know, 20 years ago, crazy. Um, the original company was a perfume company. That's how he actually founded it. And it was over the years in the 1920s um, and, thir and um, 1830s that it was rebranded as Avon Products, Inc. And then makeup and other things started to be incorporated into, into the line. Now, th this pioneer idea of direct selling, though, started to emerge around the 30s, 40s and 50s. And this is when um, Avon was hiring women to be their representatives. Now, this meant, because we didn't have internet then, there was no online ordering, this meant that women were um, able to work from their home or go into some, to someone else's home and show the products from a catalog, from an online catalog. And we've all seen the Avon catalog, right, the little book. Well, at least I have seen the book. I've never, to be honest, I must be honest, never ordered any Avon products. So I've, I'm not a user, but many of you probably know it very, very well and perhaps love it. I mean, the products, some of them were so iconic. Now. Um, this rebranding took place in the 30s and 50s and this direct selling model uh, really got kicked off. And can you imagine though, women women didn't work like we do today. And I was thinking about this the other day when I was thinking about money and the fact that I didn't have any when I was a child because we didn't have a lot of money in my house. My dad was the only one working and my mom couldn't work. Number one, she didn't have that many skills um, because she didn't have the education, but also she just didn't have the opportunity. But Avon and companies like that gave women a chance to make some money selling cosmetics either in their own home, have a little gathering of people, or go to people's houses. And this was the time when the Avon lady phenomenon started to really take um, place, take footing, because it was, um, they were the confidant, they were the friend of other women in the same situation, young children, you know, not working full time, uh, maybe working in a part time job, but they were able to make friends and become their confidant. And there was always these jokes about, you know, you could tell the Avon lady anything, it's kind of like, you, it's people you couldn't talk to, you could talk to the Avon lady. So this Avon lady um, was a significant part of building the brand. Then the global um, expansion took place um, in the 60s. And this is when, you know, it started to really put out the catalog and, um, you know, have lots of different products. I think for a while they were, I mean, maybe even still sell jewelry and of course perfumes and, um, you know, other thing cards and the, you know, the expansion really, really started in the 60s. And it was, it was very, very quickly established overseas as well, worldwide, Europe, Latin America, United States. It was super popular apparently in Latin America. I didn't know this, but, um, you know, as a company, it grew exponentially and adapted um, over time to the digital age. And so in the 2000s to the, to the present time, um, it's now got this amazing network of online sales. And I think, you, well, I know you still have the Avon lady that, um, that you can go to to buy your products, but also um, you can just do it yourself by going online. Now, the reason I know that there's an Avon lady um, phenomenon still in place is on TikTok, there's a woman, her name is Valerie, and she does um, makeup tutorials, um, very little talking. She mostly does just putting the makeup on and it's all Avon and she's an Avon lady. And there's probably a lot of them um, on TikTok and places like that. But um, anyway, 
she's there. And so if you, if you ever, if you want to talk to Valerie, I could connect the two of you because she's really sweet. And we have, we're friends on TikTok. She's over 60. I think she's probably in her mid sixties, but she's really sweet. But there are still Avon ladies out there is I guess the point, but it's gone digital. And now it's, you know, it, I don't even know, can you get the paper catalog or a little uh, booklet anymore? I don't know. But anyway, highlight, um, it's uh, digital um, savvy. It, it did really well going into the market. I, I, I'm fascinated by how that all happened. You know, what was the, 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 the politics, the, the, the management behind it all that could see these trends and could make a sense of it. But let me talk a bit more about kind of what its values were and how, why it grew so much, why it was so popular. First of all, the commitment to women's empowerment. They wanted to empower women. It's kind of like Mary Kay in, in, in Texas. There was this dedication, this focus to making it work for women who could not go out to the normal workplace. Uh, a direct selling model, which encouraged and empowered women entrepreneurs. Very, very important. They had a training and uh, model and a financial independence message that you know they, they were not just throwing you out there. They were training you to be able to make money with their products and be successful. They allowed you to work from home flexible hours. I mean, this is all part of the reason that it did so well. And there was a very um, low barrier to entry. You didn't have to put a big investment into buying a lot of product and they didn't require that you have a college degree or that you, you know, that you had a certain amount of education. They just had a, a relatively low bar to get in. If you wanted to do it, you could get in. There was a starter kit that you did get, uh, which gave you you know, a little bit to show to everybody. And the the, the audience for their, their their women, for their for both for the women who's selling the product and the women um, purchasing it was a, was a lower middle class income. The, press, the products are not luxury items in that sense. They're not expensive. So you can purchase and have a little, little you know, treasure chest of, of goodies for yourself. They became, the, the women that became a trusted advisor and friend uh, who listened to life issues. They just chatted with their, with their customers about you know, their situation and they could share their secrets. It was so powerful. The second thing, other than this community generated um, structure and the, the, the bar, low bar to entry and making it empowering for women was the fact that they um, focused on quality and innovation. They paid attention to interesting products and they just didn't limit it to makeup. They did fragrance, of course, and they did skincare. And I know there's a product that I've completely forgot about. I'll talk about the iconic products that was supposed to be good as a mosquito repellent. And they, they, they discovered this particular cream was a good mosquito repellent. So everybody bought it for that reason. But the point is, is that they were innovative about their technology. The next thing is that they had corporate social responsibility. They actually took their jobs um, seriously for the, envir well, the environment, for the society. They had the Avon Foundation for Women, which was um, related to women's health, women's um, safety and well-being, domestic violence. This Avon Foundation raised money. I think certain, well, I know a certain percent of their profit went to the Avon Foundation for Women and, um, you know, as it, as it gave money and, and supported all these causes for women, breast cancer, gender-based violence, all that kind of thing. They were way ahead of their time with that. And I said, strong community and culture. You know, they believed in connecting women. 60 and me. I mean, they were, you know, we're such a, a similar company in that respect. You know, we're trying to empower women. We're trying to, uh, you know, make it available to everybody and, you know, keep our, our costs. Like, no, there's no content charges and that sort of thing. Um, you know, we support in our videos, all these causes that, um, that they did. So I'm really kind of, I'm, lo I'm loving Avon. I think it's a cool company. Maybe you've had negative experiences, but for me, just reading the information, information and you know remembering what I can of it we were kind of a Pons family in my house to be honest but Avon's still a really good story um so company is inclusive in its culture and let's talk about products okay so the iconic product was a new do you remember the cream a new it was like you know really really popular a new um the skin so soft I think Avon skin so soft may, may have been the one that was the mosquito repellent but clear skin I don't know whether that was for acne, but I think they did a product called Clear Skin. Their true color lipsticks were really popular too. And then they did this thing called Super Shock Mascara. Also this whole line of Magix, M-A-G-I-X, Magix Face Perfector, Perfector Primer, and then they did eye things, Glimmer Sticks. And then I think that one of the famous ones is the Avon True Color Concealer. So these were the ones that Avon was super, super, you know, hot on and uh, leading the way with. And they also, as I mentioned, did jewelry and accessories. 
Um, what are the keys? I think they just learn to adapt to changing markets and to, to different ways of selling their product, different ways of packaging it. Um, they're in a hundred companies today, a hundred countries today, and you cannot deny that they have got some of the best brand recognition around. You say Avon and almost immediately people say lady and immediately they think of the products and they think of the working from home, the women meeting in each other's houses, the empowerment that this beauty company gave to women. I think it's powerful. So empowering women through beauty, I think it's a powerful message and I'd love I honestly would just love to hear your comments about Avon, not just that you used it, but what did you use and why did you like it? And were you an Avon lady? <laughs> Tell us your story. I would love to hear. I'd love to know. Take care, everybody. Hope that you're well. Put on your makeup, whether it's Avon or not, and go out and shine in the world and have a fabulous day. Take care, everybody.